Peter Ingram, um, Worcestershire I was born in 1943, uh, Hampshire I live now, a little village called Selborne. I've been here for 46 years. Thank you. And I was a gypsy van builder and painter. Plus I had the only gypsy museum. Uh, well, I was the first to have a Romany folklore museum. Um, oh, golly, 1976, I think, when I opened that and closed it in 95. How I came to be at the World Romany Congress uh, was a fluke, really. Um, Raywood, Brian Raywood, was a member of the Old Gypsy Law Society, and I'd recently tracked him down. And I was up the Welsh borders at the time, uh, traveling about, and um, Brian said that this was going to happen. And I thought, well, I might as well pop down there, a bit of fresh country, um, and have a look. And so I did. I pulled in to the car park at the school, which was tarmacked, of course, uh, with my motor and trailer. Uh, and I remember having a dustbin lid with three bricks uh, that I could light a fire on, um, which went down very well. People seemed to like that. But in those days, um, I used to cook outdoors all the time. So that's how I happened to go. And I'm glad I did, because I met Tommy Lee and Margaret. Um, I really liked Tommy Lee. Um, later on, he started up the Romany Guild. Um, my old pal Dennis Harvey uh, did the logo, which was a Dunton style horse's head and horseshoe. Good old Dennis designed that. Uh, and Jimmy Penfold, Pucky Penfold, um, he and his wife Rose used to drive down here to Selborne. Uh, on a well, not every Sunday, but some Sunday afternoons, uh, they drive down from Battersea and see me. Um, that was in the seventies, late late seventies. So when when you you arrived and with Tommy Lee and the Penfolds, were did they come in trailers or were they? Still? No, Tommy Lee had a trailer. Uh, there were only the two trailers there. Tommy Lee, um, he pulled in with an old trailer, and I had mine. Uh, it was an interesting couple of days. I remember there was a wonderful flamboyant dancer, Raya or something her name was. I remember her in these long flowing skirts, very flamboyant, uh, uh, dancing. Um, but I don't remember call any other music. I think I spent most of the time round me fire by me trailer chatting to people. Uh, oh, uh, Jeremy Sanford, um, uh, Romany Drum, I think. Was it Romany Drum magazine he used to do? Um, Kathy Come Home and um, oh, uh, what was it now? Ma, the inebriate woman? Edna, the inebriate woman. Um, oh, and he played the accordion very well. Last time I saw him must have been, well, it, it wasn't long before he died. So well, quite a few years ago, he, he came here and did a little film, uh, Spirit of the Gypsies. Oh, and I remember dining in the big dining hall, because Brian Raywood was the cook there, you see. Rattenboxen. Um, in fact, I've still got letters, because I keep everything. I've still got letters from Gra Gratton uh, back in 1964 or something, when he was out, out in Ireland. Uh, and we corresponded a, a few times. Thomas Acton, yeah, good old Thomas, Thomas of yeah. course, my my old friend Thomas. Yes, I remember Thomas very well, but I've not <laughs> seen him for a good many years. What was Thomas up to at the Congress? Well, remember? Thomas was his usual self, 
bumbling about everywhere and um, <laughs> dear, dear Thomas, I'm very fond of Thomas Acton. Very knowledgeable man, of course. Yes. Could you uh, tell me a bit about um, the end of wagon time and the beginning of the modern world for Romany people? The end of wagon time? Yeah. Oh, well, all those days are long gone now. People try and relive it, uh, but you can't. You you just can't. Um, end of wagon time really was the end of the 60s, uh, beginning of the 70s. Uh, uh, there were still people about living and traveling and earning a living because the women used to go out with the baskets, you see, calling every day, hawking. Uh, it was so much different then. Um, I, well, I still live in those days. Uh, I really do. I've got no time for the modern life. Uh, although I did end up with a good trailer. I ended up with a nice butterfly special uh, trailer. Uh, but um, no. And then I, I came and got my old yard here in Selborne in 75, I think it was. And that was the best thing I did, because things were getting a bit difficult uh, traveling about. Um, but in the horse-drawn days, oh, I just loved that. It was, um, well, the winters weren't so good. Uh, but um, if if you had a place to pull in for the winter, that was all right. You could have your cottage tent for your kitchen which I've still got, my 7x7 cottage tent. And, um, yes, but the uh, I, the end of wagon time, that was the end of the old gypsy lifestyle, really. Well, as far as I'm concerned. And, of course, all the old people are gone. Uh, all those days, those people, um, all the affairs and secrets of little Egypt, as we called it, uh, is long gone now. Hello again, Peter. Hello, Thomas. Oh, I forgot you were there. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I was uh, running, bumbling about, as you say. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, 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 I was, Grafton had me doing a lot of bumbling about. <laughs> oh, I do apologise. <laughs> I forgot you were there. <laughs> yeah. um, I've got a question. Do you think that having that meeting and having all those Romney people from overseas there, well, not so many as we've seen, but did it start a new chapter? In oh, I think so, yes. Oh, definitely. All the different organizations uh, that have started up, uh, of which I've never been a part of, the only uh, organization, well, if you can call it an organization, was, you know, the old Gypsy Law Society. Um, and I loved those old Romany Rise and Ranis. Um, oh, they were delightful people. And, of course, they did everything for no monetary gain, those people, different to what it is today. And um, all these people getting all these grants and all this, and... Uh, uh, making money, really, out of the word gypsy. As I say, I've, I've never been a part of that. I've, uh, I've always been too busy trying to earn a living. Do you think it started a new kind of mutual awareness between English Romanies and Romany people overseas? Well, yes, it, it must have done. Um... I, I went out to Hungary, to Paisk, Paisk is it called, down southern Hungary, to the yes, Paisk, to the, to the gypsy school there. Oh, I had a wonderful time there. We put on a folk show. Well, I was part of a folk show, music show down there a few years ago. Um, and all oh, the children, oh, and of course, very dark, of course. And... Um, uh, and um, we had to go 
with the Romanus uh, for different parts of the body. and th- Of course, they pronounced it practically the same, a lot of the old gypsy words, but it was very interesting, and what wonderful musicians, and the girls dancing. Um, oh, it was beautiful. I had a lovely time out there. Uh, oh, the children were... Well, uh, a lot of the children were... Uh, were like the little kids I knew when I was a kid myself. Um, uh, very uh, dark and a twinkle in the eye and mischievous. and Oh, they were beautiful children. I, I had a good time there. It's interesting because um, a lot of those were people, our, our people, they who learnt Romani at the school because their own language was Romania. Yes. Um, that would be the Gandhi High School. I That's right. Pace That's Pace it. Pace. That's the place. High school. I visited Pace in 79 and I think 87, mm-hmm. uh, before the Gandhi High School started in the communist times. But already the schools in Pace uh, um, had taken a whole lot more uh, Romani children into school and were graduating them. So it was one of the best places that they could have started a grammar school uh, to take a lot of Romani children who had a good uh, primary education. Oh, and when I was in Patagonia, South America, because I've, I've had a bit of a good life, I've mooched about. Um, when I was in Patagonia, um, I was I, I got pally with some Spanish gypsies out there, the Miguel family. I've got some good photographs of them. And again, we could converse, uh, not very well, but um, like uh, Jukal, dog, Jukal, they say, or something like that. But yeah, we could get by. I think the Spanish Romani in Argentina is better conserved than it is in the south of Spain. I tell you what, you you'll love this little story. Um, the family lived next to the police station, in I think it was a scale. And uh, I said, uh, "Why do you live next to the police station?" Because we are safe. We feel safe living next to the police station. Jimmy Berry, the wagon painter. Yes, my friend. I was at his funeral, and I was also at Tommy Gaskin's funeral. Uh, We'll never see people like that again. I know Jimmy Berry's daughter. I've met her at Stove Fair a couple of times. Yes. I I first met Jimmy Berry in 1962. In fact, he, Jimmy Berry was my mentor. Let me just get your comments on this. Adrian Marsh's father worked with, and I don't know if it was his brother or his brother-in-law, a younger brother-in-law, till he had a quarrel with him. Uh, they worked as sign painters. Oh. But the younger brother reputedly had a pattern book that belonged to Jimmy Berry. Well, I I would question that. We were trying to track down who had this. Uh, uh, well, it could be anything. Uh, I mean, it, it could be just somebody who'd made a note of the, the various motifs. That, uh, oh, that'll be David Smith. David well, Smith I, did a book of scrolls. That makes sense, because I know David... David idolised Jimmy Barry, and he yes. got things. Uh, yeah, if he had a... Yeah, he's the kind of person who would have done a scroll book and credited Jimmy yes, Barry. It, and yes. That's the kind of thing that a working sign writer might have taken as a, a pattern book. Yes. I'll, I'll check with Adrian on that. We can't check with David anymore, alas. No. I was at his funeral, too. I chucked a bit of money in the grave, and I forget, well, somebody was stood there. Oh, is that for him to have a drink? I said, no, that's to pay the ferryman. And and they looked at me 
as though, well, they didn't understand it, but you know that the ferryman rows you, rows you, uh, rows you over. The ferryman. I said, that's for the ferryman. I always chuck a bit, well, we, we, we do. I always chuck a bit of money in for the ferryman uh, to make sure he gets safely to the other side. I'm just writing a long obituary. I'm going to try and get it in the Daily Telegraph because they like odd, interesting people uh, in the obituaries. And my old friend Mervyn Jones, um, he died in January. And um, so I'm doing an obituary in that. And I've, I've mentioned all these people, and of course they've, they've all died. Um, it, it's, uh, well, we've come to the, well, I keep saying we've come to the end of an era. And a lot of people that I still know have got big gates that keep the world out. Well, <laughs> keep certain types of people out. Uh, keep them all out now, my son. My boat top wagon and my horse Joe. Uh, in fact, I've still got the carriage lamps that are on it that I've got on my other wagon in the yard here. Uh, I've always kept my carriage lamps. Uh, and there's me as a young fella uh, and Sylvia. Oh, and me dog, Nimble. Well, I've not had a dog for many years now because my little terrier, Tessie, uh, she was 16 when she died, and I was so upset, I burnt her basket and smashed up her bowl. Oh. Uh, I kept her collar, um, and uh, I cried. I'm not ashamed to say I cried for days, and it's the same as members of your family. Yeah. Um, because I've only got a son and a daughter, and uh, no one else. The end of the line. And oh, neither on. are really interested in the way that I live or anything. Um, my boy went to Durham University, and Nancy went to Brighton University. Very academic. Uh, but it's very handy, because Daniel... Uh, does all me typing for me, so I have to keep nice. So I still have a fire outside and, and cook, not all the time, but it, throughout the summer I still cook outdoors. Uh, and I don't live in a house. I've built like a log cabin, well, a shack, uh, which is very cosy and very dusty and cobwebby and That's full great. of books and papers. And Sounds lovely totem poles and Eskimo carvings and uh, and everything's got a story. When David Smith died, um, his wife said, Peter, I would like you to have all of Dennis's books. And uh, I said, it's very kind of you, Myra, but um, uh, I've got too much stuff as it is. I said, but what I would like to buy are John Jennipen's woodcuts. Uh, 1939, 1940. Uh, now, Dory H fell out with this fella, John Jennipen. Harvey, his surname was, Edward Harvey, as you all know. Uh, and he'd done these beautiful woodcuts. And um, of some of the old people. And uh, she sent them to Mr. Francis. And when Mr. Francis died in 18 two or something his wife had a sale and david smith bought these five woodcuts uh, and he had them framed and he sent me photocopies of them oh they're beautiful and um so i said to david smith's widow uh, i said i would i would buy those i'm looking at them now on the wall and she said, Peter David would love you to have them. And so I've got them hanging on the wall here. John Ginnipen, Edward Harvey, 1939-40-40. It was a good one of Jim Mace. And um, Bartley O'Gorman, not Gorman, but O'Gorman. Uh, Diddlem Taylor, Trumpy Marshall, and then Esmeralda Groom, Esmeralda Locke, 
Arch of Beauty that 19... Well, she died in 1939, as you know. And um, anyway, I've got them on the wall. 